everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun easel card with a shaker element on top. You can see it there, we're moving around. So I'm gonna call this my loaded shaker easel card. Very easy to do, you know, just follow the step by steps and it will come together perfectly. So um, if, if you haven't made an easel card before, Again, very straightforward, just a few extra score lines really to get the, the initial shape. And if you haven't made a shaker card before, I've got lots of good tips um, to help you, you know, make that much easier when you go to make yours. So I'm using the Fiesta Fever paper pack by First Edition. Really colourful, just fun. And these are thank you cards. I needed a couple, so I've got another one that I'm going to be making with you. And it's going to be the same colours really, because I'm just using up the scraps. But it is just packed here, just loaded, full of sequins. And it's just really, really fun. And you can see the flowers there. Just try to incorporate that kind of Day of the Dead, which is what this themed pack is that they've done. And um, obviously these, these are like the flowers that you would have on your headpieces. So I've just kind of incorporated that into the card shape. In terms of your message, you could add a white piece of paper here or on here. I'm probably gonna add mine there. And then I'm just gonna write a little message um, for who this is for. You could alternatively put something on the back here as well. So there's plenty of room to write your, you know, stamp your kind of sentiment and write your message. Okay, and it also all folds flat. It is more bulky, so you would have to pay a little bit more in postage, but it does still fit perfectly in a six by six envelope. Okay, so to make this one, you are going to need, I'm gonna show you the, um, the way that I add my double-sided tape to for the shaker card using the greaseproof paper here, or wax paper. Really, really good tip, that one. Lots of you like it, so if you haven't seen it, stay tuned. I've already made four flowers, so I've got three for the bottom and one for the top. Obviously, it's entirely up to you what you want to do there. Got some double-sided um, double foam adhesive, I've got my glue. These are my sequins. This I got for a pound from Poundland, and there's loads. I mean, I've already used uh, you know a good amount in that card, and I've still got tons of it left. But the colours work so well with this paper pack, so they're the ones that I'm using today. And just if you haven't already seen me rave about this pack, here it is here, Fiesta Fever. And it's just so fun, really, really colourful, can be used for so many different occasions. So that's what I'm working with at the moment. So let's get rid of all of this. So basically I make my own um, card bases with most of my cards because I like to have different colored backgrounds. So this one here is cut from a piece of 12 by 12. So if you've got a plain piece of 12 by 12, you'll pretty much use all of it for this card because um, as I talk you through, you'll see why, but even down to the orange in my flowers, just to keep everything matching, I've used scraps of the same card. So I basically cut my 12 by 12 in half, so I've got a piece of six by 12, and that's what I use for my card base. And then basically along the 12 inch side, I just score at six and nine. So scoring at six will just give you your normal folded six by six card. By scoring that extra score line at nine inches, that's all it is to give you an easel card. So when we fold that one over, okay, like so, there is now our easel card. So it's very, very easy, all right? Then with that other six by six piece, six by 12 piece of 12 by 12 that you would have had, cut it in half so you've got a piece of six by six, okay? And this piece is going to sit right over the top. So it's literally going to perfectly cover the top of that fold. And that is what this piece is all on, the shaker piece, all right? We'll be working on that piece separately. So I'm just gonna talk you through those pieces for the minute. Um, so you've already done your card base, so then you've got this six by six piece, and then actually you're gonna need this piece here. So choose a really nice pattern paper, anything that you want, and this is five and three quarters squared, okay? Now with this piece here, get rid of my scoreboard. If you don't have a, um, a die cut that's the same size, this is from a nest of square dies. So any nest, you should have a square that's a good a size, a similar size to this, which is four and three quarters, okay? So something as close to that, because basically you want to create this frame that I've got here, okay? And all I've done, I'm gonna do now, is just run that through my die machine with it right in the center there, okay? So I'm just gonna bring in my machine here. I'm going to do a lot of the stages with you today just for anybody new to card making you can get to see me do kind of more of it so just pop that one in there if you've got some washi tape then pop that down I'm just gonna wing this one 
is pretty much okay there. And just get that one run through. So, so now we've got a really nice frame. Now if you don't have the dies to do that, you can do it through your trimmer. Okay, you can cut a frame that way. Keep your pieces of scrap here because you can use them to die cut bits for your flowers. So try to use all of your card. Okay, so now you've got this really, really nice frame. Okay, and that's going to sit. This is going to have the acetate attached to it, so we don't need that anymore. Okay, so next what you want to do is, let me just bring back in my scoreboard. So we've got these pieces. So now you're going to need a piece of acetate. The acetate that I'm using is by Crafters Companion and this is five and a half by five and a half squared. And that will fit perfectly behind this here, giving us this little window. Okay, so that's your acetate. And then to go behind that, so this is basically the paper, you can see, just I'll bring that down, pattern paper there. Now you don't really see it, but if you don't want it to be as full as mine, then you will. And this is five and a half by five and a half. And that is going to stick on this piece here. And then that is going to go over there. And then in between, we're going to have all of our sequins. So that's what we're going to now do next. Okay, so we've got all of those steps. So first of all, what you want to do is stick down your patterned paper. Okay, so I've already put some double-sided tape on the back of mine. And I'm just going to get that stuck down. Okay, so it will fit nicely, giving you a quarter of an inch border, like so. Okay, and then when it comes to the piece of acetate, what you want to do is, I like to use, whenever I'm using acetate, I always like to use my red tape. So I've got a strip here of quarter inch, and basically I'm just going to go around all four edges and just run that along. And you'll just find that this sticks really, really well and it will not peel off. Whereas some of your normal double-sided tapes, they may well over time lift. And then obviously you don't want sequins kind of pouring out everywhere. So if you kind of make cards and then maybe stash them away, you know, when you go to bring them out, you know, a few months down the line, that's sometimes when you can notice like tape lifting and things like that. Okay, so I'm just doing that on all four of my sides here. With all red tape, with any double-sided tapes really, just make sure you always go over and really push it down, just making sure you get rid of all the air bubbles. And you'll know if you have, because it will change colour, it will get a darker red, because that means it's stuck down properly. Whereas if you can see it white, that's because there's too much air between it and it's not actually stuck properly to your surface. Okay, so once you've done that, now I would also use an embossing buddy just to get rid of any static um, and basically just kind of rub that over. You can also use cornstarch, that works well. People use talcum powder, or I try not to use talcum powder anymore. But um, yeah, so anything like that. But I don't find I need it when I make a loaded shaker card because I'm putting so much, so many sequins in there that it doesn't matter if they stick because you don't actually see it. So now turn over your frame and then just stick your acetate down so it is all inside, okay? None of it's overhanging. And then again, just go over and do the same. Make sure you get rid of all your air bubbles. And there's no way that that is going to lift off now. That is stuck, unless you really rip it off. But in terms of it just gradually lifting, it won't do. So now we've got a really nice window, okay? So that's done separately. Now the next stage, is on the keep it over this side is to add our double sided tape so what I do is this is just very inexpensive from the pound shop I never pay for the expensive stuff ever um, and all you need to do is just stick it on some wax paper grease proof paper and just stick your strips down and in fact I'm at the end of that roll now that's okay I've got another one basically by doing this and I've shown this lots of times, so I know a few of you now, you can just fast forward this bit. But basically it means that you can use your scissors and they don't get ruined, but also you can cut really thin strips of this stuff for your shaker cards. So when I'm doing really, really smaller, like circles and things like that, look, I can cut really thin strips of this so easily. Now this to buy on its own is very expensive to buy this uh, and you don't get a lot from it you won't be able to make tons of cards whereas I've you know this is a really just very inexpensive way but you can see now I have made four very thin strips I can probably get about two or three shaker cards now out of this and you can see there and my scissors are still perfect 
and yeah it's just a really great idea so I've got them here already done and this was just cut in half so it's just that one strip just cut right down the middle and then basically all I can do now is just peel off the back stick it down so you want to work from corner to corner and just as you go along just peel the backing off keeping it all concealed within that frame and then when you get to the edge here just cut it always make sure you cut under the double so um, the greaseproof paper again so you're not getting any of that stickiness on your scissors and then make sure you butt it right up so that again no sequins are going to come out and just bring that all the way down to the edge again or the corner sorry and then just cut that there again make sure you don't go over the edges because you don't want any of this to be seen and then again butt it right up like so and then that last piece and the main part of a shaker card is you do really want to make sure that there's no gaps you know make sure you push this right down you don't want any bits of your sequins getting out because some of the packs so this pack particularly has tiny little bits all the kind of middle bits of the sequins is all in there as well so there are tiny bits that could fall out and just cut that right up to the edge there so you can see now so that is the frame all ready now what you want to do next is grab this piece and this is what we're going to add our sequins to now you can Put your frame over the top and you can see there we're going to get a nice one eighth of an inch border with the orange all the way around. But also by doing that it gives you a rough idea where I can put my sequins. So in this case I've got this stripey paper so I know that from that pink stripe to that yellow stripe is kind of the, the width of where I can put my sequins. And then just roughly about three quarters of an inch, an inch down. So I can just keep everything there. But the good thing is you can keep putting your frame over the top and just push the sequins in. So basically now I'm just gonna tip tons of these sequins onto here. Now I want it really full, but again, you don't have to have it this full if you don't want to. But again, I wanna keep it into like that yellow, up to that pink line, and then kind of come down like so. You just wanna make sure that you're leaving a space to be able to stick that double-sided tape down to, okay? So I'm just giving myself a, a square shape there and then just bring your frame back in again and just lie it down and you'll be able to feel if it's got any sequins underneath it but that's okay and again I'm still going to put a few more just on the top there and then that will spread itself out in a minute. So like I said this is loaded but I do like the effect it gives but if you don't want to do this much or it's the first one you're doing just put a few in just so it shakes around nicely like even that one there, you know, you can see. Okay, so it's entirely up to you how you want to do this, but I'll show you both ways. So now that's all ready and in place, you want to go around and take all the backing off of your frame. Okay, now I'd say this is the trickiest part out of it, but it's, it is still easy. Just start from the top and make sure that you've got your even border and then just bring it down just slowly like so and then I can move those around now there we go because I'm going to be putting my sign over there I mean I've still got room I could have gone more again but you can see now it just really nicely moves around and that's how you make a shaker card so it's really really it is easy as long as you just follow those simple steps it does make it better for you okay so next I want to add my message so let's just see here, I have got this one here. So again, these are the cut out pipe pieces that come in the packs. So that one's just gonna be sticking kind of like so. Now this time, I think I'm gonna put this on some foam at this time. So I don't want it to go over the edge. I'm just gonna pop a little bit in the middle there. Okay, and then just got a little bit kind of hanging off like so. Just like that, that's lifted. Yeah, that looks better. So now we need to start working on this inside piece here. So to decorate the actual card, so bring in your piece here again that we scored. So this is our actual easel card. 
So it's going to be that way, okay? So this is going to be lifted like so. So this is the inside. So I've got a piece here of five and three quarters by five and three quarters of patterned um, paper. So again, I'm just going to stick that down inside. Again, just take your time, make sure you've got that nice one eighth of an inch border. Okay, like so. And now what we do is we stick this piece on because the next bit you need this to kind of be in place. So what's going to happen is we're going to add some, I'm going to pop my double sided tape on the bottom half of where we've done that score line. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a few strips along here. Okay, again, just make sure it's all nicely stuck down. Okay, now also what I'm going to do is add a little bit of wet glue. Just because this has got a bit of weight to it, this will just kind of help. Plus it'll give me a bit of wiggle room, not that I really need it, because you're just lining it up with the lines, because it's exactly the same size as your card front. So, but that will just give you a little bit more um, security with it when it's stuck down, because we're only sticking one half. So basically what you want to do now is start from the bottom end here, make sure obviously it was this half, okay, remember? And then this bottom, the bottom of your main piece here, it will be flush because it's exactly the same size as the bottom of your card. So just line it all up like so. And then fold it over and just make sure you really stick down that bottom half. Okay. And then now, when we lift that up, you can see it's only attached halfway, but it will now go up into that position, okay? So you can stick anything on that shape. Once you've scored that piece here at that six and uh, nine, you know, you can do any shape easel card. And I'll put a little link up here to my other easel cards as well, because yeah, they're really, really fun designs. And they're a nice, I always say, it's a good next step from a standard open and close card when you want to start going into more fun fold cards and easel card is the perfect one I think. Okay so now that that piece is done I've then got this here so I've got one piece in white and then some patterned paper from the same pack there and this is the white piece is five and a half by two and three quarters and then my pattern piece is five and one eighth of an inch random I know it was a scrap piece so obviously you can you know adapt that by two and three eighths so it is a bit of an odd one but it was because that's what I had as scrap and I just didn't want it to go to waste so again I'm just going to take off my backing and get that one stuck down okay you'll have a nice equal it's about um, a quarter of an inch like so and then this piece I um, you need to stick it on double sided foam because you need it to be lifted to, to basically this is going to become your wedge the piece that will hold your easel card in that shape so I've just popped some on the back there and again just take off the backing so and now bring it up and it's entirely up to you how high up you want it but I've done this so that if you lay it down so that you get a nice even border on the left, the bottom and the right hand side, like so, so I've got about one eighth of an inch, um, no about a quarter, quarter of an inch, like so, that will look wedge itself there. So it kind of stops it, I mean it does stay up because it's, it's got that weight to it, but it will naturally want to go there. So just bring it up so you've just got a nice even border, okay. I've got a little bit of a tufty bit there on that edge, let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so that's that piece done. And now it's just down to decorating. So I've got these three flowers, which I'd already done. And I'm gonna use some of my wet glue. And again, you can decorate this entirely how you want. You might wanna have your message down here and just have this as a really nice flower or, you know, anything. Moving that around too much. Just make sure it's in the middle. There we go. So I'm just gonna get those stuck down. Okay, like so, and then this one is going to go on the top here. Um, I'm going to put it on there. It's, it's actually stuck onto the um, the card, not the acetate. If you want to stick it on the acetate, just make sure again you put the red tape on the back. But that will stick there nicely. And there you have it. I'll just bring that up. How cool is that? I really, really like these. They're so fun. They've just got that nice shake to it. Just 
yeah, they've got the shine, the sparkle, everything. I do, I love using sequins, I love shaker cards. And there's the other one, so let me just hold them both up. And there you have it, really, really fun, nice, nice cards to add to my stash. And um, like I said, one of these is gonna be going out um, to a friend. So there you have it. So I hope you've enjoyed this loaded shaker easel card. Hope I've inspired you. Um, as always, please share them over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group. You are sharing some fantastic designs over there. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel so you get to see more of my tutorials and I'll be back again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.